Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. This is part two of a hydraulic piston rigging. In the first video we rigged up the pistons with the method that I usually use, and today I'm just going to show you a way that I actually enhance this rig. The most common way I've seen pistons being rigged uh, in Blender has been to use a bone parent, and that's great, except once you extend the piston to a certain point, you get this really ugly space right here. And it's going to limit you when you're in animation, and you're going to have to go back to rigging to fix this. It's not a very nice uh, effect. Now, I've seen a couple videos that actually deform the pistons instead. And that way, you're never going to get that gap. And that works okay. So here you can see I'm deforming it. The only issue is you're going to get stretching on that piece right there. And say you had a really rusty metal, or you had something written on that piston it's gonna to start to stretch and now it's a surfacing issue and it's just not a nice uh, effect. The only benefit to having it deform as well is no matter where you bring this piston down, uh, it's never gonna come through the bottom over here. But I have a third method I'd like to show you today and I'll show it to you here. So I can basically rotate this arm as far as it will go and the piston never has that space there and I don't get any stretching on the texture. Same with this piece down here. Now I'll flip it to solid mode so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a shape key and a driver to compress the piston when it's not being seen. So you can see it here in the top arm here as well. I'm actually compressing it down using that driver and that shape key and it's just creating this really nice effect where it looks like the piston can do more than it actually can and it never will come down the bottom of the rig over here. So I'll show you how I built this right now. This is the rig from last week. I'm just gonna to flip to solid mode. And we built these extra pieces here to basically move the piston. And this one is having the issue down here where it's actually coming through the bottom. So let's do uh, this one here first. So right now it is going down too far. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to local mode. So I'm going to go to view, local view, toggle local view. Now with this selected, I'm going to come to the data here. That's this little triangle right here. And we're going to add a shape key. So I'm actually going to add two. This basis is sort of like your base pose. And if I add one more, I'm just going to name this piston. I'm just going to turn the shape key up to one. I've left a link in the description that goes over shape keys in far more detail. I'm just going to keep going with how to add this into a rig. So I'm going to grab these verts down here. And I'm going to hit G, Y, Y. And that allows me to move the verts along the axes of this local rotation. And I'm going to move it as close as I can up to that other edge right there. Now with that selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go add driver. And it's going to bring up this panel right here, which is actually new to 2.8. Uh, I'm actually going to ignore this for now because I want to do it through the driver menu. So if you come to the bottom and you can actually make your timeline bigger, you're going to come over here and you're going to go to drivers. This is the driver editing panel here. And there's a couple things I want to show you on the left hand side. If you go to key, you can have this value piston. That's your actual driver. Over here you have this little arrow right here and you can expand that out or you can hit N on the keyboard. I want you to come down to the drivers panel right here. And a driver is essentially a driven animation. Um, it's sort of like the connection editor in Maya or a set driven key in Maya. So we have a couple options. We have scripted expression and driver value. We're just going to leave those alone for now. And then we have the actual expression. And you can do all sorts of things in here. You can do 10 times 1. You can do math. You can do uh, radians 10. A lot of Python expressions will work in here. We're going to keep it simple for now. We're just going to type var. So at one, I had collapsed that shape key down. 
And for the var, I'm actually going to input the rig as the variable and click on piston rig. Just like constraints, it's going to bring up the second option here called bone. Now let's figure out what bone we want to drive this shape key. I'm going to go view, local view, and toggle local view. I want the shape key to be driven with this controller here, that as this controller rotates, it's actually going to drive that shape key. This controller's name is arm.001. So if I select my geometry again, and I type in arm.001, that's perfect. And I want it to be the X rotation. And that's this rotation. If I come back to my rig, and if I go back to pose mode, I'll select on that arm, come up to item here, and you'll see that my X rotation is taking care of that. Now if I, I'm going to leave that rotated for now at about 50 degrees, and I have that space there, that issue that I've seen on other piston rigs. I'm going to go back to object mode and select on that top part right there. You see that I have that X rotation in the type and space as world space. I'm just going to flip that to local space, meaning I only want it to activate when this piece here rotates. So only when this piece rotates not when the whole rig rotates. So I'll bring that back up to about 50 degrees, just for that example, I'll go back to object mode and I'll select on that piece again. So right now it is at about nine. And if I come back to my data down here, at my shape key, you'll see it's at about nine. Now I want the shape key to be at zero right now and one when it's collapsed. So what I can do is I can do one subtract var. And that's going to activate the shape key when this gets to a certain point. And then as it comes back, it's going to activate that shape key back to one. So now I'm actually just going to put this in front. So if I come to the object tab here and click in front, it'll be visible all the time. I'll come back to my rig. And when I rotate this, you can see how that shape key is being activated. Let's do the same thing to this piece here. So I'm going to click View, Local View, Toggle Local View. And if I hit Tab, you'll notice I have the same thing. I have some rings down here. So under my Shape Keys, uh, you can't add Shape Keys in Edit Mode. I have to go back to Object Mode. I'm going to add two Shape Keys. And I'm going to rename this, this piston for now. I'm just going to turn it up to 1. I'm going to hit Tab, and I'm going to hit GYY. And that's going to put it right on that local axis. I'm going to bring it right up to that other edge. I'm going to exit object mode. And same thing, I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to go to add driver. I don't need this panel here. I'm going to come back to my driver panel in here under key, under value, and select it. Then I'll go to drivers. Again, I'll just type in var. For the object, I want the rig. And for the bone, I know it's arm.002, but I will just show you what bone that is really quick. So I'll go to view, local view, toggle local view. I'll select the rig and select that top bone there. And I want it to activate when this controller is fully extended. So right now it's at minus 80, or about minus 88. I'm going to come in here and put arm.002. And I'm going to do X rotation again and local space. So again, I want this to be at zero when this is fully activated and at one when it's fully compressed. So right now it's sort of doing the opposite of what I want. So if I bring it down this far, it's going to come out of the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to do one plus var in this case. So that when it's compressed, it equals 1. And then as this extends and becomes a negative number, it's actually going to start subtracting from that 1 there and causing the shape key to relax. So I might fine tune this a bit as well. So I'd like to find out that point of where that's going to actually activate. By clicking on that piece of the piston here, I'm going to come to the Object tab. And I'm just going to turn on Wireframe. And then I'm going to turn on all edges as well, and it's going to give me that edge as it appears. 
So right about here it's appearing, and if I just go to side view, you'll be able to see it a little better. So if I select on this rig now, on that arm, and just rotate it, at about minus 47, I actually want this shape key to be turned off all the way. So instead of 1, you'll see that my digit here is actually minus 8. Instead of 1, I'm going to do 0 0.85. And that's going to pretty much put the piston at 0 at that point. And I have a really nice animation that's going to work really well there. So that's how I tend to rig pistons. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, or if there's anything you want me to go into more detail. I'm going to do a future video on drivers in a bit more detail and how I use them. I tend to use them for a lot of rigs. I tend to use them a lot. Um, so I will be covering them in more detail. I kind of went quick through them today, but I just want to show you how you could rig a piston the correct way so you don't have any of those issues that I talked about at the front of the video. Anyway, see you next time. Bye-bye.